Ida for expecting my daughters to share their grandma's inheritance 50-50 regardless of the will. I have two daughters that were my late mother-in-law's only grandchildren, Elise 22F and Rhea 21F. She always favored Elise because Elise wanted to follow in her footsteps and be just like her. She spent so much more time with Elise, teaching her her profession and using her connections to get her set up in her field. When she went into care, she had to disperse her assets to pay for it. She took yet another opportunity to favor Elise by making sure she alone got her tools and a small amount of land that she used to set up greenhouses. She passed a little over a year ago, and we got a letter in the mail about a trust that she had set up about a decade ago. There isn't much, about $30,000. The trust states that it's supposed to be shared equally between her grandchildren and can only be fully dispersed when the youngest is 21. The only two grandchildren are my daughters, Elise and Rhea, and Rhea just turned 21. We asked about it and got the answer that unfortunately, only Elise is eligible to withdraw any money from this trust. She set up a clause that anyone who had a child before the minimum age to inherit is automatically disqualified. In short, if one of the grandchildren has a baby before age 21, they get zero dollars and their portion goes to the other heirs. Rhea has a two-year-old son, and Elise doesn't have kids, so according to the terms, Elise gets 100. I'm pissed. My wife wants to just let it go and ignore that it ever existed just like the land. I don't. My mother-in-law never treated Rhea like a real grandchild. She never spent real time with her or gave her the same opportunities. At the time she set this up, Elise had had to undergo a hysterectomy. She set this up so that only Rhea could fail and she'd have an excuse to get a dig in one last time. I swallowed the land thing because it was affected Elise's career and there were already things to maintain that only Elise cared to. But this is too much. I think Elise is obligated to do the right thing and split this with her sister. Elise thinks we shouldn't fight the will and my wife is trying to stay neutral. Ida for forcing my brother to buy me a new engagement ring. I'm 26 I'm proposing to my girlfriend 24F on our 4th anniversary, September 30th. I've been planning this for about a month, and I picked the ring a couple weeks ago. The one I got was on sale, so I managed to get it at a surprisingly low price. Last weekend, I told my brother 33M about my plans and showed him the ring. He informed me that he was proposing to his girlfriend 29F as well. The next day, my brother came to my apartment while my girlfriend was out. He asked me if he could borrow my ring to propose to his girlfriend. I thought he was joking at first, but no. His plan was to propose to his girlfriend, explain he was using my ring as a placeholder and then take her to pick her own ring later. His reasoning was that he didn't want to spend too much money right away in case she didn't say yes. I'd never heard of placeholder rings. So I said no and the conversation moved on. On Tuesday, he proposed to his girlfriend, with my ring. He'd taken it before leaving my apartment. I got distracted at work and didn't notice it was gone until his fiance sent a picture of herself wearing the ring to our family group chat. I called him to ask about the ring, and he immediately apologized and said he'd keep his promise and give it back to me. But at this point, my girlfriend had seen it and his fiance had posted about it on social media, so it was pointless for me to propose using the same ring. We fought about it and he confessed that while he told his fiancée the ring was a placeholder, he didn't tell her where he'd gotten it from. I felt more angry and betrayed about him going behind my back and taking the ring after I said no than the fact that he stole it. I also know his fiancée enough to know she wouldn't like to learn her engagement ring had been stolen from me, so I told my brother I'd tell her the truth if he didn't buy me a new engagement ring. He fought against it for a few hours, but finally gave up and agreed. We went to a different jewelry store yesterday. And I picked a new ring. I managed to stay in the price range, but the new one was still $100 more expensive. My brother bought the ring, but is still accusing me of being inconsiderate and childish. He is insistent he would have given me the ring back had I given him the opportunity, and I didn't need to threaten him to spend so much money on me. He's now refusing to talk to me. I don't know how to feel about this anymore. I'd usually talk to my brother about these things, and it's surreal that he's the one I'm fighting. I can't tell my fiance, and many of our friends overlap. The only other person who knows about this is our mom, who's divided she thinks what my brother did was wrong and I'm right to be pissed at him, but I didn't have to stoop as low as I did by threatening his relationship. Ida? Ida for leaving curtly after my sister got home two hours later than the time she said she would be home and I would be done babysitting. Me and my fiancé babysat my sister and her friend's two kids last night originally they told us they would be home at 10 and around 9 o'clock to turn on a movie and turn off the lights to get the kids ready for bed. Around 9.30 the mom started texting my fiancé's phone asking if the kids had gone to sleep yet we said no thinking they would be home soon. The mom said turn the lights off and tell them to go nighty night. 
My fiancé responded to the message saying we thought you would be back at 10, what's the ETA? My sister responded asking if I was irate to which my fiancé said we both have an early morning in the morning. When the two moms got home they were very not remorseful for being two hours late and then not apologize or say anything about the fact there are two hours late. I went to the kitchen to grab my keys. One mom asked if the kids went down alright I replied yep and walked outside. My sister texted me apologizing. And I said we both me and my fiancé felt very disappointed and taken advantage of. I then said you can Venmo us. My sister, said wow, really? I tried calling my sister to talk about it and explain how upset I felt and hear her out as to why she was upset. My sister has ignored my calls since yesterday and has gotten my mom in the middle of it telling my mom I stormed off and was rude to her friend. Ida, Ida for shutting down a girl's attempt to diagnose me with an eating disorder? I lost my left leg when I was very young from a hospital acquired infection. I have a prosthetic leg which I use for walking and another one for running and exercise. When I was on my parents health insurance growing up I got refitted regularly as I grew up. Now I'm too old to be on my parents insurance and while my company's insurance is considered very good. Getting a new leg or getting adjustments for body weight changes are still expensive. I expect to be paying a fortune if I get pregnant. So I try my best to stay the same weight and if I gain some weight I can immediately feel it becoming less comfortable to walk. Anyway a friend's GF and I were talking and she began remarking on how I'm not eating much. We were out to dinner and I just was having a soup and salad and everyone else was having baby back ribs. I'd stolen a few of my BF's plate but generally I was trying to eat light. I said I was trying to lose a few pounds and she immediately assured me I was beautiful the way I I was and I didn't need to lose weight. I told her I know I am but losing weight helps with my mobility. She began diagnosing me with an eating disorder, saying I must have a delusion I was very heavy and having issues walking. I was pissed and she sounded super condescending and blurted out she had no business talking down to me about my weight even if it was to tell me not to change it. The other people overheard and the GF got really embarrassed and left with my friend soon after. My BF thinks I should have explained why I need to keep my weight the same but I don't think I should have to pull out my disability to get her to shut up. With long loose pants it's often hard to tell I have a prosthetic leg. I don't know if she knew. But I didn't feel like justifying why my weight needed to stay the same. But Ida for shutting down her attempts to diagnose me with an eating disorder? Ida for shutting down my sister's opinion about our baby name? Throw away because I'm using real names. Okay, here's the situation. I 25 am I'm expecting a daughter in November with my fiancé Claire. My name is Cody, so we'd like to keep the C theme going. If we have a boy later, he'll be Charles after Claire's grandpa. My fiancé and me really like the name Keely. But we're spelling it silly or chili with a hard C to keep the theme. The problem is my sister Angie 28F. She's child free, but she's still very opinionated and judgmental about names. She strongly prefers traditional common names like Emma and Madeline, and she's been very pissy about the name we picked. Last weekend, we went to her and her boyfriend's place for Memorial Day, and she took my fiance Claire aside, supposedly to help cut vegetables. Actually, Angie just wanted to rip into my fiancé with her name opinions. She said we should forget about Chili. She said she'd already talked it over with our mom Claire's mill, and they decided that we should go with Catherine Katie instead. Claire of course said hell no to that, and called me. I came in, and I told Angie we needed to go. In the car home, we called my mom, but she wouldn't admit to agreeing with Angie about belting the name. I don't think my family has veto power. It's our choice as a couple and they should my up. However Angie has Asperger's, and she's the person in the family who says what everyone is thinking, but no one will say. If multiple people in the family hate this name, I worry that the negative vibe will impact our daughter. Ida or, are we the assholes for not taking family feedback into consideration? Ida for telling my friend she'd get fat shamed in my home country? I'm at college in the US as an international student. One girl I know at said college happens to be really into my country of origin the culture, the music the TV shows, etc. and wants to study abroad there. She does ask me a lot of questions about my country and sort of sees me as the guy from X country with the stereotypes associated, which is annoying, but otherwise she's okay. One issue is that she's a bit on the chubby side, by US standards, and is extremely sensitive about people pointing it out for shaming her. My country tends to have much skinnier people than the US, and the standards tend to be stringent, so if she's considered chubby in the US, you can imagine what people in my home country would think. Said country can be incredibly shallow with physical appearances as well as blunt when talking about them. So it's almost a guarantee that she will be seen as overweight and comments will be made about it. I've seen it happen to girls way skinnier than her, who'd be considered stick thin in the US. So, when she asked me about my country and what her experience would be like in said country, 
I explained the pros and cons, and one of the cons was that there's extreme weight watching and it's considered perfectly socially acceptable to comment on and make jokes at the expense of people's weight. I said this because I wanted her to have this info before deciding to study abroad there, so she doesn't potentially put herself in an upsetting or traumatic experience. But she instead got offended and said I'm an offer implying she's fat. I replied that it's just standards are different so even though she's not fat she could be perceived that way because the standards in my country are off the charts insane. She was still angry and walked away. Am I in the wrong here? I feel like I could have gone about this better, but I do think my intention was good. Ida for telling my half-sister I won't name a baby after her. My husband and I have three children together. Our youngest was born this summer. We have always named our kids after people by not using their direct name. Our oldest girl is Jamie after my brother James, our middle daughter is Cleo after my sister Chloe and our youngest son is Devin after my husband's best friend Divine. We spoke to each person we honored prior to finalizing the name. My siblings were so happy and my husband's best friend was over the moon. We also never publicly said or we named them after these people. We would just announce the names and leave it there. After my third child was born my half-sister 12 asked me if I would name our next child after her. I told her I would not. She asked if I would name any child I have after her and my answer was the same. No. She was upset about this. This angered my mom who said it was clear my kids were named after people and I shouldn't just honor two siblings and not honor all three. I replied that it should be mine and my husband's choice what we name our children and who we name them after. Mom said I looked my baby sister in the face and crushed her heart and soul and told her that she is not a real sibling and only full siblings are worthy of being honored. She said I had treated a child like shit and I should have offered to let her help pick a name or something to smooth things over, but instead I said no and acted like her feelings didn't matter. My mom also had some things to say to my husband and he ignored her. He told me about it and I told her to keep my husband out of it. She said I can take the role of sole asshole. Though she said my siblings were close since they didn't care about her half-sister feeling upset either. According to mom. Ida. Ida for telling my sale exactly what having a big family would mean for her. My husband 42M and I 38F have 6 kids, 3 are biologically ours 8F, and twin 6M, and 3 are adopted siblings 10M, 7M and 3F. We make a high 6 figure income combined, and are debt free as well as owning our house outright relevant. My husband and his brother were raised by very neglectful parents, and used to talk all the time about having a big family when they grow up. They were upfront with me and Syl about wanting a lot of kids from our early days of dating. Syl and Bill are starting to try for their first kid, and Syl has been leaning on me for emotional support, which I am very glad to provide. Last Sunday, she asked me to be brutally honest about what it's like to have six kids. I told her that my experience will not be very helpful to her seeing as how our situations are very different, and she asked me to explain. So I told her that I am a SOM wife with a passive income in the high six figures, my husband makes over 300k a year, so we are lucky enough to not have to think about the financials when it comes to a large family. Same goes with child care, I have two nannies, that is the only way I found to be able to give all my kids the attention they need, seeing as my youngest has health issues, and that even without those health issues, six kids are a lot of work without someone there. And finally, my husband and I were looking into adoption and surrogacy because pregnancy is hard on the body, so three was my limit of pregnancies, and that we were lucky that we were able to foster to adopt our three adoptive kids, but if we didn't, adopting three extra kids, or hiring surrogates was going to be very expensive. Well, apparently she talked with Bill, and told him what I said, as well as how they should maybe space having kids more, so they could give them a higher living standards, and now he is accusing me of manipulating her and being a jealous bitch who wants to be the only one with a big family. Was I in awe by telling her everything I did? Ida for telling my sil that she doesn't have to wash everything before her baby is born? My sil is expecting her first baby at the end of this month. I have three kids. My youngest just turned one, so I have a lot of baby stuff, baby swing, clothes, toys, etc. that we don't need anymore. Instead of donating them I thought it would be nice to let my sil and her wife look at them before. I brought them over and they picked out what they wanted and needed and my sil immediately put it in the washing machine. I'm a very clean person, and all of the baby stuff was clean, so I confronted my sil. I asked her why she needed to clean my stuff if it wasn't dirty, and she knows I'm not dirty. My sil said that she's cleaning everything and named a long list of things she's cleaning cleaned for the baby sterilized all bottles and pacifiers, washed all blankets, clothes, etc. I told my sil that it's pretty stupid to wash everything because what if she wants to take something back, and it's not like cleaning everything in her house is going to make her prepared for her baby. Nothing prepares you for your first. My sil took this as me being mean, but I was trying to be helpful. She should enjoy her last few weeks of pregnancy instead of cleaning everything. My sil's wife told me that we are allowed to do things differently with our children. I pointed out to them that they've never had children, 
so she's going to feel silly for doing. I also told them that when I was pregnant with my first I didn't want to listen to anyone, and I regretted it later. They will too. My sill made it seem like I was being an ah, uh, but I don't see it. Ida, edit. Obviously I know what nesting is, and obviously I wanted everything clean and perfect too. However, when one of my family members gifted me something, or if someone I know is clean and takes care of things I didn't throw it in the washer. I might be coming off as nitpicking, but when someone throws something in the washer that came from your house like it was something dirty you would be annoyed too. Ida for telling my sister why bluntly she's not the next guardian of our new baby if something happens to me or my husband. Me and my husband recently had our first child. After IVF treatments, thousands and thousands of fertility, and a few miscarriages we had her. Our family is proud and it's just such a blessing to have her. Our family, my mom and dad and my two sisters and their SOs and kids, gather every other Sunday for lunch where grandma cooks and everyone can relax and the kids can play. I was holding my daughter when business came up. Me and my husband own a business and insurance, and ectect. My parents are the beneficials if something ever happened god forbid. My husband has disavowed his family since he was 16, so it's just my side. One of my sisters, let's call her Kay, suddenly said, that's weird. Why are our parents the ones to inherit money if something happened to us when they are older and retired have their money while she is struggling to pay her bills? Kay has been engaged for the last 11 years to a man that's 25 years her senior and is very odd. She did five kids by him. She and her family gets evicted yearly due to the damage they do to the apartments and are overall struggling. In my opinion, something that they do to themselves. She refuses to work and allows her kids to rampage. She's also recently gotten in trouble legally because she was selling her food stamps for cash and was caught. I immediately tried to change the subject but my mom didn't notice and said, well now with baby if anything happens, well adopt her in the business. My sister snapped and demanded why she wouldn't be the next in line to raise the baby, you know, in the event me and my husband's death. I tried to change the subject again. She demanded why I'd trust our 70-year-old parents with a baby over her, an experienced mother. I snapped too. I told her how she's getting evicted every six months. How every time she thinks her boyfriend is about to leave her she gets pregnant. Years ago, she had a CPS case opened against her for leaving two of her toddlers in a running car at a gas station. I had blows, I admit. Her kids are always dirty. Snot down their faces, knotted hair. Their teeth are rotting out of their heads. She gathered her kids and left. My other sister sent a not cool text and my family had two members that died in 9-11 and we have a family gathering every year so my parents are asking me to apologize and put this behind us so we can focus on that tomorrow. No, I'm sick of it. She's calling out my new parenting when she's barley hanging on. She used to drop her kids off on our doorstep, barley clothed and then return the next morning. And she's upset I don't want to give her guardianship if me and my husband's death happens. Ida for telling one of my daughter's classmates moms to fuck off about what I put in my daughter's lunch? No names in this story are real. For some context before the story, I 38F Caucasian foods regularly for dinner and for my daughter, Lily's 7F lunches at school. This is because my family enjoys these foods, I like to cook these foods, and my mom cooked a bunch of these foods growing up since she's half Japanese. Oftentimes I'll either give my daughter some leftovers from last night's dinner, plus a fruit veggie and a snack or I'll make her a quick little bento box or some other thing really quick. So, after school one day, my daughter wanted to play on the playground for a bit before we went home. I said she could play for a few minutes, and she ran off to play. I was waiting next to this other parent, who will call Debra. While I was waiting, Debra came up to me. Debra are you Lily's mother? Mio, yeah, I am. Why? Debra, well, your daughter's lunches have been bothering my son. And I would like to ask you to pack something else. Me what? How are they bothering him? She then proceeded to start talking about how her son was complaining about my daughter's lunches smelling terrible, and that he thought it was disgusting. She also said her son didn't eat most of his lunch because he was so grossed out. Me okay, I understand your son doesn't like the smell, but can't he just sit somewhere else? Deborah, are you kidding me? My son shouldn't have to put up with whatever crap you make your daughter bring to this school. It's disgusting. And she started making more vaguely racist complaints. But I was fed up at this point. Me listen, I understand your son might not like my daughter's food, but he can very easily just not sit next to her. I'm not changing what's in my daughter's lunches because you and your kid don't want to exist near Asian food. Fuck off. She angrily stomped off with her kid then, and my daughter finished playing soon after, so we went home. I talked to my husband about it, and he said that maybe I shouldn't have told her to fuck off, to avoid her bothering us in the future. Ida? Ida for telling step siblings dad off for criticizing me for not doing chores. I F15 got diagnosed with cancer leukemia two months ago. It has been rough I am constantly feeling sick and tired for about a week after chemo. I live with my dad, dad's GF, and her two kids M10F12, 
my dad and his girlfriend have been dating for three years now and started living with us about a year ago. Her kids visit with their dad every other weekend but during the week sometimes he does stuff like take them out to eat or something. Both the kids and I usually have a few chores we have to do daily. But since starting chemo some days I barely have the energy to watch TV let alone do chores so usually I don't do them on days like that. Well, yesterday the kids dad came over to take them to the movies. Dad's girlfriend wanted them to finish putting the dishes away and I was two days post chemo and laying on the couch barely keeping my eyes open enough to watch TV. The kid's dad saw him and asked why his kids had to do all the chores and I just got to lay around. He knows I have cancer too. Before my dad or his GF could reply I said I just finished a round of chemo two days ago that's why. Would you make your kids do chores after having toxins go in their body? If so then you're a big asshole. He got mad and called me a brat. My dad and his girlfriend aren't mad at me but said I should have worded it differently since the kids were around and that's their dad. I feel like I was in the wrong now. So I'm asking for Reddit's opinion was I enough? Uh? With to if I rescind a job offer that I previously gave a young girl, I, 25, am a general manager at a frozen yogurt shop. I am not the owner. But I have been with them since I was a teen and worked my way up to my current position. It's been the perfect job to pair with my classes. As the general manager, I do the scheduling as well as the hiring. The owners trust my judgment and let me hire fire at my own discretion. Last week I hired a girl, 16, from the local high school. She was extremely sweet and showed a willingness to work. Seems a little on the quiet side but this being her first job I think it's expected to an extent. There were zero tells mentions that she may be special needs. Two days after hiring her she's not supposed to start until this upcoming week her father came in and introduced himself to me. He was polite, and thanked me for hiring his daughter and left his phone number telling me to call him after I'm off. I was confused by this as I've never dealt with a situation like this. But I did call him. He thanked me again but then said his daughter has severe anxiety and a slow learner and that I need to make special accommodations for her. Here's what they are. Do not schedule her for more than 3 hours at a time. Please allow her as many as she needs 10 minute breaks when she starts to appear overwhelmed. He said that if it is very busy, it is better to just let her sit in the back room and watch YouTube. Her school comes first which I understand but he said when she has significant homework she will need to call off. Give her plenty of compliments and let the other staff know to go the extra mile to make her feel welcome. If she does make a mistake, not to discuss it with her but to call him. I don't know much about employment law and not sure if I could be in legal trouble, but like every state we have it will employment. I called the owner to tell him about this and he said to use my discretion. I want to call the father back and say I cannot make these accommodations. And if she does need these accommodations I will have to rescind the job offer. I feel for the girl, like I said she was very sweet, but at the same time I do have a business to run, I'm not a special ed teacher. What is the point of hiring her when I will need to be overstaffed to accommodate for her? I just can't do it. So right now I'm thinking calling her dad tomorrow and letting him know that she will be treated like every other employee and if this won't work for her then she cannot work here. Would I be an asshole for that edit? Hey you all thanks for the input. I've decided I am going to give her the job and just see how it goes. If she can't handle it I'll just let her go.